have a five minute break before the event begins. Thank you. Soon, the 2021 Hantangang River UNESCO Global Geopark Online International Forum will begin. 
Due to the spread of the pandemic, we will be holding the conference both online and offline. The conference will be broadcasted online and you can watch the conference in Korean on the Pocheon City Hall's channel and in English on Geopark TV channel. The international conference will be starting from 2 10. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen,
Ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 Hantangang River UNESCO Global Geo Park Online International Conference will soon begin. I am Dongwon Choi, the curator at the city of Pocheon. I'll be your host today. Now we will begin the conference. First of all, I would like to tell you that due to the spread of the pandemic, to adhere to quarantine rules, only a small number of participants have joined us offline. But for other participants, we'll be providing an online broadcast. Thank you for your understanding. The Hantangang River has been created by volcanoes and erosion. It's a treasure trove of geology where you could observe both basalt erosion topography created by volcanic activity and rivers. Through the local education and other activities, it was acknowledged in 2015 as a national geopark, and it soon was certified as a UNESCO Global Geopark. Due to the pandemic and the, dis and the ongoing changes, we hope to see Hantangang River Geoparks continuous development. Furthermore, we have prepared discussions to search for the solutions from the local community of our residents. We will skip introduction of our guests, and soon our presenters and panelists will be joining us. Before the topic presentations, Mayor Park Yun-guk of Pocheon City, the organizer of today's conference, will be giving his opening speech through a video message, followed by Vice Chairman Song Sang-guk of Pocheon City Council's congratulatory message. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I would like to welcome you as the mayor of Pocheonji. I would like to thank everyone for participating in the international conference to discuss the development of Hantangang River UNESCO Global Geopark. For today's conference, General Manager Ki Bae Kim of the Korean Committee for UNESCO and Representative Director Mi Hee Kim of Gosari Kup have joined us as presenters. And I would also like to thank Thank Mr. Yuya Kato, an expert of Shigokuseyo Geopark community, and ge geologist Patricia Rangel of Imbabra Global Geopark. I would like to thank them all. Also, I would like to thank Professor Kyungsik Wu of Gangwon University, who has contributed immensely in certifying Hantangang River Geopark as a global geopark, who will be chairing the discussions today. And panelists for today's discussions, Executive Director Hye Young Park of Hwasongsi Eco Tour Club and President In Jung Yum of Potency Hansang Education Community. We look forward to profound and fruitful discussions. To promote fundamental regional development and benefiting of the local residents from Hantang, Hantangang River Global Geopark, the, today's, the topic of today's conference is activation of Hantangang River Geopark and local community for sustainable development. There have been de devotions of the community and the local society in preserving and developing local resources until the final certification of the Hantangang River Geopark as a UNESCO Global Geopark, making the geopark what it is today. The Hantangang River UNESCO Global Geopark is the result of the cooperation of the five regional governments of Gyeonggi Province, Gangwon Province, City of Pocheon, Yeoncheon, and Cheoran. Especially, it is an exemplary case of cooperation between the two provincial governments of Gyeonggi Province and Gangwon Province. Furthermore, the Hantangang River area had been so far only been recognized as a subject of regulation, including military facility protection area and water supply protection area with the certification at UNESCO Global Geopark. The geopark is changing as a symbol of hope for regional development and 
other activation. We expect the Geopark to serve as a foundation for local tourism and industry development and activation of local economy through the brand value of UNESCO. In today's conference, we will have the opportunity to listen to the presentations of experts on how the Hantangan River Global Geopark could develop continuously after being certified as a UNESCO Global Geopark and specific action plans. Especially, I hope that today's event will provide valuable insights on the strategies and action plans to be implemented during the four years of certifications of the Hantangan River Geopark by UNESCO. Hoping that this conference hand held both online and offline will serve as stepping stones for the sustainable development of the Hantangan River Geopark. I wish all participants of today's event happy holidays for 2021 and best wishes for the upcoming year of 2022. I sincerely hope so. And I also hope for your good health. Thank you. 안녕하세요. 포천시의회 의장 직무대리 홍상국 부의장입니다. 2023 on the hosting of an international conference to set sustainable development goals for the Hantangan River UNESCO Global Geopark and establish strategies and action plans for implementing recommendations for certification. Although it has improved a little along with the transition to living with COVID-19 policy, the situations are getting worse due to the Omicron mutation. So I could attend this important academic conference in person and greeted you via video. It's very unfortunate, but I look forward to seeing and greeting you as soon as possible. I would like to express my gratitude to all, including Kim gi uh, General Manager of Korean Committee for UNESCO, Yu Yakato Export and Shiko Kuseyo Geopark Committee, Patricia Rangel, geologist of Imbabra Global Geopark, Mi Kim, representative director of Gosari Cooperative, Dong Won Che, creator of Pochan City, for sharing great insights on how to revitalize the Hangtangan River Geopark and local community for sustainable development through professional knowledge today. Also, I would like to thank all who will hold a discussion to establish strategies for the development of the Hantangan River Global Geopark. My thanks go to Gyeongsik Oh, Honorary Professor of Gangwon National University, Heyang Park, Executive Director of Hwasang Si Ecotourism Cooperative, and In Jung Yam, President of Pochon Si Hansarang Education Community. Please share great insights and words for development of the Hantangan River Global Geopark. The Hantangan River is a regional resource with outstanding geological, ecological, historical, and cultural values such as Bidurgina Falls and Hajagen Pond in Pochon, and where five local governments, including Gyeonggi-do, Gwangwon-do, Pochon, Cheolyeon, and Yeoncheon, have cooperated to finally achieve the designation of UNESCO Global Geopark. Through this, we have to become a representative geopark park in Korea, and in this regard, we are already promoting many related projects such as the creation of the Kumlumnar Joint Road on the Hantangan River. We hope to seek the development strategy of the Hantangan River and the operational strategy of living with COVID-19 scheme, which can help this area to be born as a popular attraction site and ultimately contribute to revitalizing difficult local economy. We hope that today's presentation and discussion will serve as a venue to share great insight on how to maintain the status of the Hantanga River World Geopark and to seek strategy for system development. Lastly, thank you to everyone who joined us today, and I hope you wrap up 2021 well and wish every happiness in the new year of 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Congratulating today's event, the two persons of the vice president and the mayor have given their congratulatory message. Now, I'd like to tell you the topic presentations and the program for today's conference. In the first part 
Um, Kubek Kim, the general manager of the Korean Committee for UNESCO, will be presenting on the SDGs pursued by international organizations and UNESCO and how goals could be applied to geoparks. Then Yuya Kato, an expert on Shigoku Seiyo Geoparks community and representative of Noyama Company, will be giving his presentations on the community cooperation and operation of foreign geoparks, followed by the presentation of geologist Patricia Rengel. In the second part, curator Dong Won Choi of City of Pocheon will be giving his presentation on the special values of Hantangang River Geopark and activities for sustainable development, followed by Mihi Kim, representative director of Gosari Group. In the third part, honorary professor Kyung Sik Woo of Gangwon University will be chairing a discussion session between executive director Hye Young Park of Hwasongsi Eco Tour Group and president In Jung Yeom of Pocheonsi Hansan Education Community. As mentioned before, today's conference is being broadcasted live on Pocheon City Government's YouTube channel and Geopark TV. Hantangang River Geoparks channel. We ask for your active participation. And now we will begin the topic presentations. First, General Manager Kibe Kim of Korean Committee for UNESCO will be giving us his presentation on sustainable development goals and geoparks. Please come up to the stage. Greetings, everyone. I am Kibe Kim of Korean Committee for UNESCO. I am very thankful to be invited as the first presenter of today's event, today's meaningful event. The topic that I will be discussing today is the Sustainable Development Goals and Geoparks. When we discuss SDGs, what comes to your mind? To many people, SDGs will only remind us of environmental protection. But in fact, SDG encompasses not only environmental protection, but some key areas such as um, for women's rights and fighting poverty and other values in life. It's a very comprehensive set of goals. But the UNESCO geoparks that we are participating in contributes greatly to SDGs. This is something looked over by many. So my presentation today will focus on why SDGs were established and how geoparks are relevant to this set of goals and some other implications. Okay, we are experiencing some technical difficulties. We ask for your patience. Well, sustainable development goals are rather ironic. It means that the humanity is no longer sustainable. It spurs from such crisis. Such sense of crisis is caused by the increasing population in the diagram in the early 1800s, when Industrial Revolution first began, the population was mere 1 billion. But in 1950s, it reached 2.5 billion. And in 2019, it's 7.7 .7 billion. And now, it's currently 11, currently it's 8.5 billion. In 2050, it will reach 9.7 billion, and 2100, it will reach 11.2 billion. Well, the economic developments caused by industrial revolution gifted us with combating poverty, but with the immense consumption of fossil fuels, 
it has caused problems such as global warming and climate change. It has such immense repercussions. With such crisis, in beginning the millennium, the world leaders have come together to establish a set of goals for the humanity on how we could combat the combat our crisis. They have development the Millennium Development Goals. They, they have established many goals, and they said that the goal was to be implemented until 2015. What were the results? Well, in terms of poverty, the poverty rate, the absolute poverty rate, people who are live under $9.7 per day used to be high, but now it's fallen to 10%. That's an immense achievement. Despite such achievements, other issues such as maternal health other and other environmental achievements, we are falling a little short. So to complete our success, in 2015, the world leaders have come together to an agreement that we call Sustainable Development Goals. Sustainable Development Goals is an agreement for, for that satisfies the current generation's needs as well as future generations. In September of 2015, all UN members have come together for 17 goals and 169 targets. They have promised to implement the agreement until 2030. 2015 was about seven years ago, and until 2030, we have about eight years remaining. We are at a turning point. How much would we have achieved until 2030? We are, of course, hearing many voices of concern. Due to the COVID-19, they say that achieving SDGs will be unlikely. But ironically, due to the pandemic, humans are inseparable from nature. That's the takeaway. That's the sense of awareness that we've gotten from the crisis. Now, the SDGs are as follows. There are 17 goals. And to achieve such goals, to help to assist the United Nations, UNESCO established something called Geoparks, UNESCO Global Geoparks. UNESCO believes that SDGs are not only one of the options for the humanity, it believes that it's a basic requirement for humanity to thrive. We believe that we must make our own efforts. The UNESCO Global Geoparks started at the end of 2000s at Europe. It was launched as an official program, and in November of 2015, uh, 2021, there are about 161 locations in 44 nations. This is the Chua Mountain in China, and there are other um, notable geoparks included as global geoparks. In 2010, Jeju Island made it into the list of global geoparks. In 2017, Cheongsong joined, and in 2018, Budungsan joined, and in 2020, Han Kang made it, made it to the list. Here are some photos. The concept of geoparks defined by UNESCO is a single unified geographic area, with, and they are sites and landscapes of international geological significance, and they are managed with holistic concept of protection, education, and sustainable development. And they must, they, and it's recommended that they should involve local communities and have bottom-up development. And the four factors for global geoparks is that they must have global value, and it must be proven through official studies. Not only that, official global geoparks must be managed properly after being designated as global geoparks. And they must be visible. The visibility must be expanded and reinforced. And geoparks, as their key um, factors, their networks must be reinforced 
their exchanges and cooperations. If so, how are SDGs and geoparks related? Let's examine the relationship. As mentioned before, SDGs discuss what we haven't been able to achieve. We have not achieved um, eradication of poverty in terms of poverty. Geoparks are able to use geoparks as tourist resources. They will be useful in combating poverty. And not only that, it will be able to help um, natural crises such as floods, um, arid seasons, and others. And the power and the and those suffering from poverty are especially hit hard. And through recovery programs and other efforts to prevent natural disasters, the vulnerable will no longer be vulnerable. In that sense, it um, has to do with target 1.5. And secondly, this concerns SDG 4, um, which would be quality education. All visitors and residents will be actively educated, and quality education will be provided to all of them. SDG 4 especially concerns how geoparks can assist achievement of SDGs through quality education, through sustainable development. What kind of culture and lifestyle we must maintain will be educated in the most effective manner. Not only that, these geoparks are quite helpful in terms of women's participation in the society. For instance, Kashim in Iran, local residents work at the tourist centers at the Star Valley. They greet tourists and run cafes and gift shops, selling um, handcrafts that they have made. They c contribute immensely to the society and to the participation of women. And it goes the same for Korea. Um, geoparks are included in the Natural Parks Act, and more women have been participating in geoparks. And the Geoparks Committee, out of the 11 experts, 11 councilmen, five are women, actually three are women, and the number will be expanded even further. And now we discuss um, decent work and economic growth, which should be SDG goal number eight. The society will be contributed to by the tourist resources. Through the activation of tourism, jobs will be created, and local residents will be able to work as guides and experts. And this creates many jobs for the local residents. Not only that, for geoparks to be sustainable, the local community must take pride in geoparks engaging in many activities. Today, today's topic, um, activation of the local community, is a very relevant topic. Geoparks are able to instill the geological value for not only the nation, but for the world. And if the local residents realize that, it will instill pride in them as their residents of the area. Not only that, geoparks are able to contribute to sustainable consumption and production. The local residents and the visitors will be able to learn how to live in harmony with nature. Not only that, local produce will be sold and consumed, and the geology park label will be given to outstanding produce. Not only that, the geoparks, the geological heritage has a record of paleoclimate. And if we learn that, we will be able to understand the current climate, preparing against future climate change. The geoparks gives us such insights and wisdom. Not only that, the greatest point of geopark networks is that the um, geopark networks 
are able to benefit from many certifications of UNESCO, such as Creative Cities and others. The operational expertise and know-how that we have will be able to be shared with many others, other nations that are relevant to us or other African and Asian nations. By sharing such insights, we will be able to gain more insight and knowledge that is a key emphasis of ours. Sadly, in the World Geology Summit held at Jeju Island, if it weren't for the pandemic, we would have been able to have the event offline and have more guests at this conference experiencing the actual values of the Hantangang River Geopark. Lastly, I would like to share some utilizations and implications of geoparks. Well, we have the representatives of Geo uh, Kosari Corp, and we have the geology exploration at Yeoncheon and other experiential programs. And all these programs focus on fighting poverty and creating jobs. They are contributing sufficiently to the SDGs. Not only that, from the case of Pocheon, we have the Earth Science class and other programs for not only students for, but for the general public, all contributing to SDGs. Now let's examine the case of SDG 8, which is from Jeju Island. At Jeju Island, we have the Swall Peak. And before being registered as a global geopark, we had some academic visits from experts and fishermen, people who enjoy fishing. About 13,000 visitors visited Swall Peak. But after being enlisted as a global geopark by nurturing guides and establishing many events participated by residents, we have raised awareness and have gained more participants. Last year, about 330,000 people have visited in 2016. This is an immense achievement, and they consume a great deal of local produce, contributing to the local economy. And as for Jeju Island, they have produced something called Geo Brands. Of the many certification programs at UNESCO, they provide not only direct economic support, they hope to boost the economic value of Geo Brands. Sometimes, as for world heritage, sometimes people raise questions on why they are not being helpful for the local economy. And I would like to tell you that world heritage are useful when different experiencing programs are created from the heritage, attracting many tourists, contributing to the local economy. But as for the Jeju Island, Geo brands and other brand products have been created, such as Geo House, which are housing, and Geo Food, inspired from the food, and Geo EVs, and Geo Electric Bicycles, and Geo Ferries have been created, and also Geo Gifts have been created to contribute to the local economy. Well, many regions are contemplating how they could develop geoparks, but from the long-term pers perspective, programs must be developed and activated, and for sustainable management, tourist guide spots must be created and posts, si signposts must be built. There are some contemplations and cooperative programs for each geopark must be established. And of course, human resources are very important. The characteristics of geoparks must be well known, we must nurture guides and attract the participation of local residents. They are some of the tasks that we have been interested with. Well, that marks the end of my presentation.
Due to the pandemic, we are stressed. We are greatly stressed. However, despite such difficulties, um, these SDGs are something that the humanity must con continue to pursue together. And through this set of efforts, we must contribute to the achievements, the implementation of SDGs. Well, that marks the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the topic presentations. As mentioned, after the topic presentations, we'll be having discussions at the part three. The topic presentation gave us insight into the common goals to sustain the global community. Also, it was an invaluable time to think about the future operation directions of the sustainable development goals of the geopark programs operated by Hantangang River Geopark. Up next, there will be a presentation on a case study from Japan. Mr. Yuya Kato, an expert from Shigoku Seiyo Geopark, will be giving a presentation on the case study of private cooperation on Shigoku Seiyo Geopark. Because he could not join us due to the pandemic, his presentation will be given by a video clip filmed in Japan. Thank you for your understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. I am Kato Yuya, the of Noyama Company, a private company of Shigoku Seiyo Geopark, a Japanese geopark. Today, I would like to present on private interventions in operations of Shigoku Seiyo Geopark and my personal thoughts. Before starting, allow me to introduce myself briefly. At the school, I studied about the Japanese national park policy and also studied on how we should protect and use the nature. Afterwards, I served for an environmental protection group engaging in studying wild animals, ecotourism, and management of natural parks. Based on such backgrounds, I joined and served Shigoku Seiyo Geopark Office for three years from 2015, making efforts for geopark operations as a civil servant. Afterwards, I established a private company in 2018, cooperating with local governments and promoting geoparks in many different ways. Now, I would like to move on to introducing Shigoku Seiyo Geopark that I am serving. The Shigoku Seiyo Geopark is at the western part of Shigoku as the smallest island of the four major islands that make up the Japanese archipelago. The Shikoku Seiyo Geopark earned its place as a Japanese geopark in 2013 from Japanese Geopark Committee. The area of city of Seiyo is 514 square kilometers. The geological structure of Shikoku Seiyo Geopark has the structure of the geology showing us the tectonic movements before the Japanese archipelago became what it is today, extending to the east and the west. Most of the, these are strata formed at the sea, formed by the erosion of the plates, most of which are after the Mesozoic age. However, we are observing rocks from Paleozoic ages, Devonian period, from over 400 million years ago. These rocks are the high strata from the Japanese archipelago. Let me introduce some locations. This is the Suzaki Beach. Here, coral and fossils from the Paleozoic period are being discovered. You can see the beautiful vertical striped strata. Here, it's popular to tour cliffs by ships. 
Next, the Karihama Thrust Paddy Fields are paddy fields with stair shaped paddies at the seaside. Here, citrus fruits are produced due to little amount of sunshine. There is a little amount of sunshine, and you can see people living along the coastline. The Shikoku Karst Genji Gadaba is a geography formed by the erosion of the limestone hills and a wide prairie that has been uplifted from 1400 meters above sea level to the highlands. Dairy farming takes place due to the warm current. That is the Shigoku Seiyo Geopark, a geopark in which you are able to enjoy the nature formed by the plate movements from the coast to mountains of 1400 meters above the sea level and the culture that was formed there. The operation of the Shikoku Seiyo Geopark is centered around the promoting council. The Promoting Council comprises of 55 organizations and six individual members. With the division themes of conservation, education, tourism, and local products, the Promotion Council carries out discussions and activities on the promotions of the geopark. The Planning and Operation Committee comprised of the four divisions and the City Hall of Seiyo and the Tourism Council is the deciding body, receiving advices of the experienced, experts, and advisors from each field. Also, there is an office managing councils and divisions at the Seiyo City Hall. Furthermore, there are local universities, museums, and weather stations as cooperative bodies. Well, this is the operating system of Shikoku Seiyo Geopark. We, Noyama Company, is a member of the Promotion Council carrying out our own activities and activities as a member of the Conservation Division, engaging in operation of the geoparks in contract with the office. To explain once more, we are engaging in the operation of the geoparks in the three forms of our autonomous projects, conservation division, and projects consigned to us by local governments. Let me explain them to you one by one. First of all, we are regularly carrying out nature experience activities and environmental education activities at the geopark area. Currently, we have many family experience events from young children, elementary school students, to parents. We are carrying out events throughout the year with the goal of actually filling the nature and promoting awareness for environmental conservation. These, there are participations within the geopark area. The Conservation Division of the Promotion Council comprises of local organizations making efforts for environmental conservation and protection of cultural heritage. Some of the main activities of the Conservation Division include um, considering the scope of the location and information and organizing um, statements for projects when opinions on development plans have been projected within the geopark. Recently, there have been discussions on building wind power generation facilities. Although there are different opinions on building the facilities related to renewable energy as a countermeasure for climate change, we believe that sufficient care is needed for the impact on the landscape and the people. And we are also working on choosing new location candidates. Um, projects consigned by local governments are mostly one-year contracts that there are differences on how each city runs its project. 
Um, I would like to go through the projects that I have carried out so far with examples. This is a lecture plan for citizens. Um, this has been outsourced from when I was at the GeoPark office. GeoPark learning groups, GeoPark learning groups and GeoPark guide training lectures were provided for local residents. Um, as Shigoku Seiyo Geopark, the Promotion Council acknowledges you as a Geopark guide after a process of acquiring knowledge and skills on Geoparks. In planning lectures, I especially emphasized field work. The true fun of geoparks can be learned in classrooms. It's important to actually visit and experience geoparks. Annually, the fieldwork of expanding on understanding of the correlations of the geography, landform, and life was carried out four times over two years. On the left, they are learning history of a village development from volcanic rocks. On the right is a photo of experiencing how they make snacks from potatoes by putting in potatoes in the blue container. In Japan, your landslides are likely to occur, so a collapse disasters occur in frequent manner. In the past two or three years, soil collapse disaster caused by heavy rain have occurred in several places in Shikoku Seiyuchiya Park, and in some cases, discussions on disaster recovery are underway. We identify all the related sites, and based on the reporting of survey results by experts, we are also holding workshops to discuss the ways on how to restore the sites. The picture on the left shows the local residents visiting the valley site classed by earth and sand, ensuring their opinions on future restoration. The picture on the right is a picture of the restoration of the site which does not allow the entry to the coastal road due to a collapse of soil. When it comes to the operation of Geopark, it is essential to exchange opinions with local residents. These workshops were discussed with the Geopark Secretariat to create plans and invite instructor if necessary, and I was the facilitator in the process. This is the motor course I organized at the time we had a field trip to Geopark site as a school class at elementary and middle schools in the city. Since I was in the secretariat at Shikoku Seiyu Geopark, there have been field trips to Geopark in school classes, and whenever there has been application for a field trip, I listened to the schools recast and reviewed the classes. When it comes to the operation of the Geopark, there are many ways to proceed. As a result, we try to make best use of written procedure and always pay great attention to its efficient operation. So last year, we organized a field train model that is easy for schools to use and manualized all the details in guide explanation, thereby making it easier to have access to high-quality geopark learning. This year, we published a print magazine with the theme of Geopark and local research. In this background, I felt the need to spread Geopark with a new approach that was not seen in conventional courses and events, and also driven by the fact that due to the impact of COVID-19, conducting face-to-face -face courses as before has much become difficult. In this way, we are trying to spread Geopark by leaving the course planning and instead publishing theme in magazines. On the paper, an article, an interview, I would an aquaculturist who is doing environment conscious farming right next to the Geopark site. A report on the joint cooking class using seaweed 
in a section where a geopark expert answers questions related to the geopark sent by an elementary school student. And also post columns about Geopark at the Japan Geopark Network Secretariat. In this forum, I have come to introduce a major theme that UNESCO Global Geopark strives to promote places that are not well known in Geopark. Chicago Seiyo Geopark is a national geopark, but I think it is important to always be aware of and operate UNESCO's guidelines. This magazine deliberately did not post geopark letters and geopark logo marks in conspicuous places such as covers, hoping that residents who have not been interested in geopark would watch it. Basic information on Geopark, which was called the ideology of Geopark and the mission of Seo Geopark in Chicago, was published on the last page of the magazine. Its purpose is to encourage leaders to read by themselves without having any particular reason and finally make them realize uh, this is what Geopark is like. This magazine is distributed in public facilities in the city and at your park cheering stores. We'd like to create opportunities to deliver ourselves as much as possible and convey our feelings for magazines and your parks to people visiting there. I think how to distribute is more of an issue to think about than making a magazine or a pamphlet. Lastly, I read Chicago Seiyo Park and introduced three things that I was curious about. First, is the operating system of Geopark sustainable? In Japan, the Secretary of Geopark is often in local government, but for example, even if there are enough employees, the employee changes to personal movement it happens a lot. However, geopark activities require a long-term perspective. To do this, we need organizations and talents to be involved in the operation of geopark for a long time, not only in the secretariat, but also in the region. For example, it can be said that organizations and talents that will continue to be involved in MPO and geopark operation which will be variable in the region. The Geopark Secretary thinks it would be nice to actively share information with such organizations and develop further partnerships. Second, is Geopark activity leading to social transformation? It is an area that uses your park and various natural and cultural heritage of the region to raise awareness of the important task facing society. And its goal is to continuously change society. So no matter how active the organization has been, you cannot say that you have achieved the original mission unless a society changes have taken place with the existing system. Today's forum is based on SDGs, but SDGs think uh, it can be used arithmetically to draw a better future picture of society. I think it would be nice to talk about what kind of society we want through geopark activities through various angles and to conduct a survey of officers and local residents to monitor social changes in a quantitative and qualitative manner. Third, do you share experience with other geoparks and collaborate on projects? Then here's a question about, is it only good to develop the geopark? Or is it good if the only the country or region concerned that is striving for geopark is developed? 
In our goal to create a world where all countries and people in the world understand the Earth better and continue to live a healthy life on this planet, to this end, uh, it is necessary to greatly expand activities in connection with your parks. Thank you for giving me this great and valuable opportunity to share this experience today. And let's continue to work together with your park activities for the sustainable development of the world. Thank you so much. And that's all the, for my presentation today. Thank you very much. Well, because of the video presentation, we need to uplift the mood. Because of the global pandemic, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are having conferences in many different means. Um, we are seeing some changes that we must inevitably adjust to. Well, the Shigoku Seiyu Geopark is somewhat strange to me too. It's rather unfamiliar to me. Well, in Japan, well, Japan's ahead of Korea in some areas. And Mr. Yuya Kato, at his Shigoku Seiyu Geopark, he used to work at the office but he has now left the organization as a private company. He is still engaging in some activities. Well, the geopark has, could be led by private entities. While well, his presentation focused on how private entities could lead the efforts. Next up, we have the final presentation for part one. Geologist Patricia Renga from Imbabara Global Geopark will be presenting on engagement within the geoparks, the case of Imbabara UNESCO Global Geopark in Ecuador. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's my great honor. The topic today is revitalizing engagement within geoparks. Um, especially I want to introduce with you the case of Imbaburonesco Geopark in Ecuador. Uh, my name is Patricia Rangel. I am a geologist from Ecuador. And my field of study is volcanology, but also I am love of science dissemination. I have been working with Imbabura Geopark uh, since I was a junior. Being a studying a master program, in environmental policy at Kyunghee University. Today, I want to introduce with you first in Baburonesco Geopark. Later, I will talk about the activities before the corona, but later I will talk about how we are engaging the public with activities living with coronavirus. And finally, the conclusions. Uh, so let's travel together to Ecuador. We need to go to the east side of the Pacific Ocean. You can see it in the screen, right? And uh, let me introduce with you what are the main geological settings of Orjo Park. And in order to do that, I need to explain the origin of the Andean mountains. So the Andean mountains are the result of the subduction of the Nazca Plate, the oceanic Nazca Plate, that moves from, e from west to east and subduct under South American Plate, the continental plate. And this movement produced the Andes in all along the west side of the South American continent. 
And in the northern Andes, this is Colombian Ecuador, we have two mountain chains, the eastern cordillera and the western cordillera. And in middle, we have the Inter-Andean Valley. So our job park is located in mid, uh, in middle of the in middle of both mountain chains. Um, we have a tremendous variation in altitude, and that produces a huge amount of biodiversity. Let's, let me talk more about uh, Imbabura Geopark. So the designed area is about 4,000 kilometers square. And so far we are working with 12 geological attractions. Uh, these are volcanoes, lakes, and also forests. Um, we can find 250 million of geological history in the geopark from the Mesozoic to the Quaternary period. And there are more than 400,000 people living in our geopark. These people are from different indigenous groups, but also from our Afro-Ecuadorian residents. So many of them have their own culture and traditions and their own language too. Let's review what were the activities before the pandemic. As I mentioned, the Job Park in Babura has these wonderful tectonics from, uh, related to the creation of the Andes. So this is a wonderful natural laboratory and a classroom from all of us. You can see in this video how we usually go to the field, we examine rocks, we take measurements. So these activities were very successful. And after that, the Geopark uh, signed many agreements with the local universities to promote the study of the geological heritage. But also we need to uh, develop something called uh, community engagement projects. And the community engagement projects uh, use students uh, to work with the communities and we explain to them what is, what, where come from the geological heritage and why is it, it is important to protect. So we, don't, um, we learn a lot as students, but also we learn a lot as professors. In these uh, community engagement activities, we go to the communities, we teach different things in the geology, but also in the biology, and we saw how the children, but also the adults, were very surprising when they learn about their environment. So we are democratizing the knowledge that is very important in the geoparks. Uh, we are coercing with the community. Uh, we encourage cons conservation and we empower the marginalized rural communities. Uh, but also as a student, we are encouraged to do research activities with Imbabura Geopark. So we go to different areas in the field um, we develop a uh, mapping of different geological structure. We study also sedim uh, sedimentary deposits. There are also some works to solve the eutrophication of many lagoons and lakes. And we 
here we are uh, some students and also some public from the local communities learning about this volcano. And it's really nice because they get really excited when they learn what is going on in the field. And we have made different projects, and this is some of them, but I will skip this one. But now living with coronavirus has been a challenge for all of us, right? And it's not deception in our geopark. So in the first uh, wave of the coronavirus, the geopark encouraged people to keep the social distancing measurements. And we share official information in the social media dur during the pandemic. And we share like clear guidance with the people how about how to avoid the spread of the virus. And I mentioned that the indigenous people have their own language, this is Quechua, and you can see here, this, this, uh, this paper here is in Spanish, but the one over here is in Quechua, because many of them don't speak Spanish. Uh, later, in order to increase the positivism on the people that was in lockdown, we proposed a drawing contest. So the first part of the drawing contest was to uh, share a local legend with the people. The legend is named the gigant and the, the gigant of Imbabura and the lagoons. So later we ask people to send their drawings to us. And we have different categories from nine years old to more than 30 years old. And we have 30, 43 participants in total in this first time. And here you can see some of the drawings. This one here is from a very, very young ch child. And he probably it was the first time that he listened about the legend. But this one is from a, uh, an artist, and he applied the technique between photography and drawing. We think that in that way, people forgot for a little time that they were in a lockdown. And they also learn about the legends in the Joe Park. Then we promote a documentary series about the Andean bear. The Andean bear is in danger of extinction and only lives in the territory of the Geo Park. And nowadays we can freely use this material for educational purposes and it's a great way to, uh, to engage people with the deep reasons to protect the habitat of the geopark and also to protect the biodiversity in the geopark. Uh, as I mentioned to you, there were many students working with the Geopark, and they came out with this idea, the first scientific congress, and we have more than 20 conferences, more than half of them done by students. And in the online modality, we have more than 200 listeners. We have people from our country, but also from other countries. So we ask all the students to present what they know about the geopark in a non-technical non way, so the public, all of them, can understand what is happening in the geoparks.
We also have co-working sessions to promote local business. So during the scientific congress, we promote what the local business were doing. And if someone wants to help or to buy some of the products, they were able to contact these people. So we can say somehow the pandemic made us closer even when it's a little contradictory. So Imbabura Geopark uh, was promoting open spaces to learn and um, people from all over Ecuador was able to join us. We also open spaces for the Yacht and the indigenous groups. And it was one of the first time that they have a public space to say what they are, are their needs and, what, and how they want to build the geopark. We also have technical conference with experts. And later we saw that there was an opportunity to connect with other geoparks in all the region. So this conference was about geoparks in all Latin America, and that was Chile, Brazil, Ecuador, Me Mexico, together talking about how to uh, keep uh, strengthening our geoparks. And of course, all the public was welcome to assist to them. And lastly, uh, we are trying to reactivate in the tourism. So we have uh, this uh, phrase, Imbabura as a safe destiny. So many of the destinations in the geopark are promoting outdoor activities. And the local business work together with the geopark to ensure that they all follow the biosecurity guidelines. In that way, we can keep promoting Imbabura and we can grow the local economy that was very affected during the pandemic. But now we are growing back a weather. <laughs> so let's finish the, with the conclusions. And we saw in this process that creativity and flexibility were key to keep engaging the public in the different activities with Joe Park. Anything related in conservation, education, and tourism is very important for our job parks and follow the SDG guidelines, right? And we have geoparks as some extraordinary places on Earth, and we, sh and we should preserve these beautiful places. But also we need to value them and generate well-being. Pre-COVID activities and post-COVID activities are different, but the core is that public education for conservation. And geoparks can boost the appreciation of the territorial heritage, but also we can boost the local economy that is very neat. I want to finish with this uh, phrase. Is nowadays more than in any time before, we have the imperative to protect our nature and biodiversity. And it comes from the need to save ourselves, humans, and to well, and to live in uh, better conditions.
Thank you so much for your attention. UNESCO's Global Geopark in 2019, one year before Hantangang River Geopark. Through the Geopark policy, Imbabura was able to promote understanding of the value of geological heritage and biodiversity of local residents, achieving developments in education and tourism, especially emphasizing the importance of public education. The last um, sentence is especially amazing. Geoparks are amazing. We are living alongside an amazing geopark. Well, that marks the end of the first part topic presentations of today's conference. We'll take a 10-minute break. It's 3.20. We'll take a break until 3.30. Due to the spread of the pandemic, we couldn't prepare refreshments. We ask for your understanding. Let's take a 10-minute break and proceed with part two.
Now we'll begin part two topic presentations. Uh, I have moved my position. Now I'll be the presenter for this presentation. I am the presenter now. So for the special values in the sustainable development activities of Hantangang River UNESCO Global Geopark, I'll be giving you a presentation. Let us see the slides. You see the letters here, right? Geoverse. Because of the raging pandemic, because the pandemic could persist, and since we hope to prepare for post-COVID era, we have ambitiously prepared for a metaverse. It has become somewhat very difficult to learn about geoparks, so we have been preparing new content. We plan to open the metaverse next October. We plan to build some real contents. So Geoverse will be a brand. It will be a brand for the Hantangang Geopark. Today's presentation will be on the Hantangang River Geopark. We have some of the local residents here and some guides here today. Of course, they will be very knowledgeable about the geopark, but I would like to discuss our future directions and how we should utilize the Hantangang River. You see the logo here? Maybe this isn't very familiar to you. The UNESCO logo somewhat changed this year. UNESCO Geopark and Biosphere Reserve. Why am I showing you these two logos? Well, I am sorry to be discussing the Joseon Dynasty, but there was this person named Lee Jung Hwan uh, during the Joseon Dynasty. He traveled well and he learned about the different geographies, and he wrote a book called Technology. The technology focuses on the Hantangang area, especially the northern parts. This area is difficult for um, aristocrats to live. I will be mentioning this very often throughout my presentation. Why were the people of the Joseon dynasty unaware of the value of Hantangang region? But in the later parts of 2010, UNESCO started focusing on the values of Hantangang river region. At, and in 2010, the Pocheon green area became a biosphere, and in 2010, the Hantangang River became a geopark. And I would like to, I first hope to um, explain some of the values of the local geology. Hantangang is widely discussed as a uh, non alive textbook of geology. I believe that many geoparks prefer the term. But Hantangang is very close to the capital city. So the Hantangang Geopark provides many programs for students. And it has a value beyond geology. It's a value pursued by geoparks. Geoparks should be beyond geology. It should be about the local community and the residents. The ecosystem, history, and anthropology, these factors must come together to develop geoparks. So I would like to say that the Hantangang River has a value beyond geology. I'm sure that many of you will be aware of the history, but I'd like to tell you about the Hantangang River. See, it says the meeting of the water and the fire. I'm sure that many of you know, but the Hantangang River has been created by an erosion of the water meeting the volcano lava. I'm sure that you know the formation process. Let me skip through. But why is the Hantangang River so important? Let me discuss the values presented by the Hantangang River. Our location is about here and extends about 35, 40 kilometers to the north. 
It reaches the Ori Mountain and 650 hill, meter hill, and a volcanic eruption occurred here about that's about 3.5 million years ago. And there have been many volcanic eruptions, and the lava flew down to has flown down to Paju. It didn't reach far north, but some archaeologists believe that it reaches to Wonsan. It divides, it connects the west and the east, and the evidence has been added by Hantangan River, creating a geology of erosions. That's a characteristic of the Hantangan River. Well, I would like to present on the special values of the Hantangang River. I have already mentioned many geological factors, but now I'd like to mention other values of Hantangang River and why UNESCO acknowledges Hantangang River Geopark. Let me give you some explanations. These values are some geological values of Hantan River, not only the, not only in our history, but in before his, in prehistoric era. Well, I'm sure that many re residents of Pochon City have visited Art Valley. They have been created during after the abandoned quarries. The Hantangang River extends beyond the eroded areas and some other um, limestone related factors. So further up the history, after the mankind appeared, well, you are very well aware of the prehistoric site at Cheonggo, right? At Jungni region, and the Dewe mountain region, and up above this Hajongli area, and Cheolun's Gosokjeong area. All of these areas have shown some historic uh, monuments. The flood dam has been built for the Hantangang River, and this leading to more excavations. And many, many characteristics have been discovered. And one of the most notable characteristics is that uh, many um, historic remains have been found. And prehistoric sites down the Hantan River, that's about 300,000 years ago. And as for the Pochon area, that's about 40, um, 50,000, and Cheolun, that's about 300,000 years ago. Um, this means that people, there are many theories that people started traveling from north to the south. But this, provo this proves otherwise. I'm not an archaeologist, so I can't draw conclusions. But some of the archaeological characteristics of the Hantangang River remains to be studied. And in addition to the geological factors of the Hantangang Valley, we are seeing many other factors and characteristics. And further beyond the history, we mention Han River often, and Kuguryo, Baekje, and Silla have fought from the 4th century to 7th century over the territory. But not only the Han River, but if you see here, the Hantan River and the Imjin River and the Yongpyeong River of Pocheon have been an area in which the three nations disputed over greatly. The evidence is that the the bank rivers uh, of Hantan River and Imjin River are seeing many forts. This means that there have been forces moving north and moving south. They were at a stalemate. And we know that Achasan is the fort of Koguryo, and the two nations have disputed greatly, but that's like the last resort. But the defense line had been around the Hantan River and the Imjin River. And the historical remains, historical evidence would be the forts, the Pampo Fort and the Ungderi Fort. They are some of the most notable um, evidences. As mentioned, um, the Hantan River has been created by Chusangcholli. They have utilized the landscape to build forts. 
they have built wooden forts and these have come together with earth science and history. Hantangang is a treasure trove of all of these characteristics. I have mentioned the Panwal um, Fort. This is a historical site. This has been designated as a historical site. And what would I say? This is unrelated to the volcanic eruption, but it has utilized this tractor. It's a, it's a very strategically built um, architecture. And from Wonsan, they have descended from the cliffs down to the forts. And this was a center of transportation or surrounded by the mountains. The Panwal Castle is located right in the center. But when you say the uni unification of the three nations, who do you think of? Yushin Kim, of course. Are you aware of Yushin Kim? Well, I'm asking questions. I think that I will be asking many questions in my presentation. Yushin Kim fought against Koguryo and contributed greatly to the unification of the three nations. The Hantangang River, the eruption of the Hantangang River, and other geological um, factors. So um, these factors have changed the history very greatly. And now let's discuss the Joseon Dynasty, a closer point in our history. Uh, writing techniques um, the Hantangang River was negatively viewed. And I believe the reason is because of the cold climate. It's hard to farm and it's hard to live. And that may have led to some negative comments. But at the Hantangang River, at the northern part of Gyeonggi, the mountains have a splendid landscape. This is recorded in history. And this remains for the um, arist aristocrats to visit the Hantangang River. After the 18th century, the Im Jin Weran and Pyeong Ja Horan during the Joseon Dynasty, well, not as today, but it, the his it became more abundant. The nations flourished and people hope to discover themselves. And in discovering themselves, they visited the mountains with great landscapes for self-exploration. That's part of the culture of Joseon Dynasty. And they visited the mountains, uh, living paintings of the beautiful scenery of Hantangang River. Along with the pictures, they have left some journals especially while visiting Kumgang Mountain, they have, they have left many records of the Hantangang River and other splendid scenery. Hantangang River was visited very frequently. And Hantangang River used to be very valuable, but we were ignorant of such values. We were ignorant of the values of Hantangang River. Do you know where the picture, this picture is from? This is the Piduginang Falls. How do you feel when you see the pictures? It's quite different from what it is today, right? The Piduginang Falls, right? Many people visit the falls, the falls are being conserved, and we're utilizing the falls for our own good. But seven, eight years ago, the Piduginang Falls used to be somewhat like this. But now, um, rediscovering the value of the Hantangang River, and knowing that the Hantangang River Falls have such many values, the Hantangang River itself started changing. And the city of Pocheon, um, did a reinvestigation of the Hantangang River and designated some great sceneries, Hwajagyeong, Mongwuri Valley, the Piduginang Falls, and Kurai Valley, and others. There have been eight great tourist spots, and of the eight tourist spots, we have designated five as natural heritage. As you see here, the area started to be conserved, but conservation itself does not make the area sustainable for future generations to enjoy. So this has led us to conserve the Hantangang River region, linking the area to the local community. 
and we promote it. You see here the system of geoparks. Geoparks, as mentioned before, are not designated only for the geological value. There are many places with greater geological value compared to the Hantangang River. Of course, I do not know all of them fully because I'm not a geologist. But if the region is loved by its local residents and if the local economy and education could be benefited from these geologists, when we have this organic system, we will have a great geopark. In the process, we have selected this geopark system. And in 2015, we were acknowledged as a geopark. And in 2019, we were acknowledged as a UNESCO global geopark. In our break, um, the representative Jun Yim told us that this system is great. And related to this system, and it's amazing and splendid that we have a seminar inviting local residents. But if we were to go one step further, we need the residents to really know about the geopark. Only that will lead to the conservation and development and utilization. So we have this virtuous cycle. You see the Pidruginang Falls, right? The Pidruginang Falls are visited often by the people and it's been conserved. But if we were to return to as it was before, we will not have many visitors, then we will have less tourists and we will have little number of people contributing to the economy. If so, the local residents must know about the geoparks to induce more economic local activities. We must have this organic system to ensure that geoparks are run properly. The slide here is for 2022. In 2020, we were acknowledged as a global geopark. If you see here, this is the Pocheon area, and this is the Yongcheon um, Cheon area. The area is 1,165 square kilometers. That doesn't touch us, right? That's like twice the area of Seoul metropolitan city. That's an expensive area. The residents are must have different programs with the Hantangang River area. That's our aspiration. But this geopark system in 2020, we were certified. I mentioned that we were certified in 2020. But the Hantangang River Park to we cannot be a mem we cannot be a UNESCO geopark forever. We have some awesome experts at geoparks. So the According to the system, we must be certified every four years. We are certified only from July 2022, July 2024. So there are some efforts that must be made. Like the mayor of Pochonsi had mentioned, UNESCO designated um, the city of Pochon as a geopark, and there were nine notices, nine recommendations. Some were short term, and some were mid to long term. But as for the short term goals, for us to be recertified in 2024, we must have local residents engaging in the activities and we must have a single system and we must have educational systems. Some areas of focus that I'll be discussing today focus on such areas. Local, the local residents must be aware of geoparks and they must learn about what geoparks are. Also, I'm sure that SDGs are somewhat familiar to you too. Um, Mr. Kube Kim and Pastor Rangel and Mr. Yuya Kato have all mentioned SDGs. Now, I'm sure that you've learned about what SDGs are by now. The United Nations have designated 17 SDG goals. Some areas of focus include quality education, clean air, clean energy, um, quality jobs, sustainable communities, responding to climate change, and responding to, and cooperation of the global community. So the SDGs of the Hantangang River 
we hope to focus on expansion of education and the local economy. Even before being a UNESCO geopark, we have had many um, education programs. And we are focused on educating students. As for education of the students, they could feel and learn about the future values. So we are focusing greatly on our students. And we have these many different programs, many hands-on experience programs. Also, as for geoparks, we hope for the general public to be able to learn about geoparks. We have some experiencing programs, some geopark programs, um, bracelet making programs, volcanic programs. And furthermore, students could engage in club activities to make echo bags and actually experience the sites, the locations. And Omicron is plaguing us with the COVID-19 pandemic. So responding to the pandemic, we are making many different attempts. As mentioned before, we are uh, making many trials with um, Geoverse. And before that, we have also introduced many no contact online programs, some tour, tour programs, VR, and performances. These are some of our notable programs. And we have this online tour. Our guides of the Hantangang River region have dedicated greatly to the VR, VR program. Afterwards, we have, I'm sure that some of you may be familiar with this program. Some of them may be unfamiliar. From 2016, we have been having geo festivals in 2020 and 2021, we couldn't have the festivals, but we hope to be able to host festivals in 2022. Especially at Hwajagyeon, we have some creative musicals focusing on Hwajagyeon. We couldn't have performances, but in June, we had a performance. And the big theme of the performance is that all the actors are local residents. The local residents um, engaged in the festival as actors contributing to the society. So next year, we hope to have some more programs and contents. We hope to prepare more programs. Furthermore, let's watch a video. These are some of the club activities, local club activities. The middle and high school students, this is a dance club. They have filmed this advertisement promotion video. Let's watch the video for 30 seconds. That's the Piduginang Falls and our Geo Center. The students are dancing so happily in the promotion video. We are running out of time, so let me go through the slides. I'm the host. Okay, let me go through the slides. I'm sorry. Not only that, we are making more efforts for the local residents to run to learn about the Geo Park. Some of the achievements include these small clubs. And the club members are, have created the crafts which are exhibited at the center. And we are also engaging in activities, um, education activities for our students. And the local community. The Hantangang Geology, Geology Park, the academy, are holding exhibitions. Not only exhibitions, they have um, garage sales and volunteer work. They are wrapping the trees in preparation for a cold winter. They have knitted these clothes for the trees to keep the trees warm. 
This is all based on the idea that the geoparks belong to everyone. And in addition, they are engaging in some economic activities. And our city has been selected as the Ministry of, of Tourism creating these um, packed lunch boxes and ice cream. There are, we are seeing some amazing abundant programs. I'm sure that these programs will be provided to the public next year and engaging with the tourist companies and other groups. We have been holding some programs. We had a two-day program with the firefighting station and as for the city of Pocheon and other tourist companies, we have all greatly benefited. And in addition, through the global cooperation, we had present presentations from Japan and Ecuador. And we've had some global participations. And we are exchanging greatly with other geoparks around the world. Mr. Gibe Kim had mentioned this, so I'll just skip over this. Jeju Island has some of the most advanced geoparks. They have some geo house, geo activities, and some other great systems. Based on the systems, maybe the systems could serve as a basis for other awesome programs. We could benchmark Jeju Island, and now some of our future efforts. This is the picture of Hwajagyeon, and this is also a picture of Hwajagyeon. This is from 2021. There was a great flood at Hwajagyeon, and you see the immense difference. For the geopark to be sustainable, we must be aware of the environmental changes and climate change. Next year, the Hantan River Geopark will be providing some other programs as well. We will be developing some environmental programs and education. Well, due to constraints of time, that marks the end of my presentation. Right, that's last slide. This is my last slide and the most important, the future of Hantangang River Geopark. This is the people of our community of the companies. I believe that these people are our future. Thank you. That marks the end of my presentation. Yes, I have become the host again. I have zoomed from there to here. Now we have only the last presentation of the day remaining. The next presentation will be given by given on the measures to activate non face-to-face -face community operation in the post-corona era by Representative Director Mihi Kim of Kosari Coop. Please give us your presentation. Greetings everyone. I'm the Kim Mihi, the representative director for the Kosari Cooperative. So I'm going to talk about the measures to activate the community cooperation in the COVID-19 era and the roles of the community. So many of you might be curious about the role of the Gosari Cooperative. So I'm going to talk about in a more familiar way. So I have also majored in geology and archaeology. So now so we're going to trace all of the footprints that the people have long been lived in this planet. So these are the presentations that are being recorded for the last four years. And this has been a fitting to the COVID-19 era and therefore, this will be all of the activity that we have done so far. But although we cannot have a very face-to-face -face interaction, but we could be able to collect more information that could be collected by the people around the world. So let's begin the uh, presentation. And 
and the local community is to promote the quantity of development of the Korean society and therefore to uh, promote the greater well-being of the people in the residence to the great engine of the nation. So this could activate to improve the quality of life in various ways, such as the improvement in housing environment or some kind of education, culture, and welfare, or some kind of environment and jobs, and et cetera, issues. Therefore, this could be handled in a way that contains a local identity and which can further develop down the road. The possibility of the success of the local community is something that has been mentioned a for before speaker, but the sustainability of the local community is not only about the current generation, but also it is about the future generation. Therefore, this would be the uh, about the striking a great balance between the elements of the society, culture, and economy. So for to successfully have the uh, local community, there should be a resident participation, a local identity, and there should be also a networking as well. And this should be achieved in under the cooperation, and this should be achieved under the same goal. Uh, therefore, all of these elements will go together, and this will achieve by a step together. And our Gosari Cooperative will be achieved uh, based on the uh, very valuable cultural heritage activities. And this will be combined by the conference planning and the instructor lecture and content of the field study. So based on the field study, we're going to heritage the cultural, uh, utilize the cultural heritage, which will be centered in education. So before that, there has been no proper contents that we could make use of. And we had to borrow the contents in the past. But now, we can now utilize all of the various contents that is tailored to its own purposes. So this could be for the targeting population, which includes the senior or the youth or the other uh, population group. So along with the operation, we are focusing on the developing content. So as you can see up here, there are no people wearing masks. So it is before the COVID-19 pandemic. And therefore, they could have more frequent field study and they could engage more activities. And they move out all together by bus and they could have food on the bus and they had more enjoyable time during the field study. But now, now we are now living in a situation where we cannot have a time to look up to the clear blue sky altogether. And you can all see here that we have a field study that the social club or family or people as a group, uh, as a form of a community or a friend can enjoy the field study together. So this field study can not be together, but this field study should be developed into another form which can be enjoyed for our children or other form of group. So this is a picture that is posted by the Go So Young. And this is a post that has been posted here and there. And this is a post that is being posted in the early 2020. So after the COVID-19 pandemic, the world has totally changed. And this new world is something that we have to think about how we can uh, pass through. And this is the time that we have to take, uh, make use of the new opportunities and using various contents in our hands. So this is why they have developed a various content on our own. So before the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, as you know, many participants have been there. So for the successful development of the local community, many people have been participated in this activity. So we have pondered about how we can develop further down the road and how we can how we can hold various other activities and engage more people into activities. But after the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we have not, it has much become difficult to have people get together all in one place, but it is true that we are being together in a different way. 
right? So given this fact, uh, because of the outbreak of COVID pandemic, the, one of the biggest difference was the limitation of the gathering number of people. So it was only limited to six or 10 at a different time. But according to that timeline, we have wondered and we have pondered about how we can deliver the community activities in a proper way by following the government guidelines. So we have thought that even though we didn't have, if we have a limitation to number of people together, we have thought that under the same purpose of gathering, it would be nice, it would be fine to have a small group gatherings. So people who are gathering around a same purpose and same reason, it would be nice and noteworthy. So the four mentioned speakers have all mentioned about the things that I want to mention as well. So I feel I'll rather relieved when I'm having this presentation now. So when we go to Jeju Island, there is an all language food and every beverages or some kind of local produce that we can enjoy. And Pochon is the same as well. There is own language and films and the cultures that the Pochon can only uh, produce to people around the nation. So this could be the examples that films or goods production or stories or stage plays that Pochon can only produce to people. That by doing so, if this small great gathering can all together, this should be something that should can people ensure the communication one another. So one of the ways that we can promote further activities is to build build a village broadcasting station. So this could be open at the museum or exhibition site, or. By doing so, we can assure what kind of contents we have been built and what kind of information we can share all together. So even though we cannot have a face-to-face -face interaction, this could be a networking that we can share a lot of information. And also, plus that, we are also creating our own SNS account and share a lot of contents through social media, such as YouTube. So not only for the radio, but also we are posting a lot of information in the social media account and sharing a lot of contents all together. So here, we're showing a lot of contents through videos and we don't need any uh, particular devices or other things that we can just edit and post a lot of information through smartphones, so which is a very easy life that we can uh, pass through this difficult COVID-19 pandemic. So we have pondered about how we have had passed through these difficult times even if there is no these smart devices before the COVID-19 pandemic. But now because of the smart devices that we have now in our hands, we have been much more easier to have communication with people around the world. So there is no problem in communicating in people in these difficult times. And as you know, many of the classes have been delivered from Zoom platform, right? And because we are now living in a district age, many people are communicating through videos and films, which has been allowing many people to share a lot of contents more easier than before. So this is not focusing on what we are doing, but it is more focusing on after the COVID-19 pandemic in the 21st century, what we have done in the 21st century. So it is a more about recording a lot of activities. So now in the 2021, at this moment, a, the December 27th is something that we can record about. So this could be a magnificent record that we can have with these smart devices. And the other thing that we can promote is to create a VR content. The VR content cannot be enjoyed fully all together, but it is something that can be shared all together. This can be shared in one place, but this can be something that can be shared all together. So this could be enjoyed through 3D, not just 2D. And 
So in the virtual reality, we can just promote our own potion contents to the outside world, and this is an item that we can make use of it. So here, if we put the pattern of the QR code, we're going to run out of the time to press the button QR code. Here, if I press the button QR code, it will pass to the other one, but it might be difficult for as of now. I hope the other one is the work, but and this is a Jane Falls. If we're using the QR code, we can all enjoy the Jane Falls. The reason why we have put the QR code here is because that we could put in a textbook. And when you press the button in the textbook, you might enjoy it fully. And this could be connected to smartphone, and this could, you could enjoy it. So people who are not joined today will find it unfortunate, but you can just enjoy it if you go to the QR code. And this be all enjoyed by pressing a button a QR code slowly. So the QR code is something that you can just press it and enjoy all of the contents inside it. And next, we are creating AR content. So this is a uh, textbook that is being uh, shown in the exhibition. And And this content can be seen in turning left and right, and this can be seen in large. So if you don't go in person, you could get a greater information with AR contents without visiting in person. So I've tried a lot to have a the participant in the picture to have a larger image, but by, ju by just using the AR contents, you can have a more greater information. This is something that is being shown in the Land and Housing Museum. But I hope you can see that, but I think we cannot have it now. But, but in the e-book, a lot of the resources that is contained in e-book will be connected to the QR code, and you can enjoy all of the contents via VR and AR content. So if we have this kind of textbook, if we can have this kind of content, we can have a local community operated, and all the people, although in the situation that all the people cannot be together in one place, these are the contents that can be joined people all together. So that's, the picture in the right is Homo sapiens and me. And this is a picture they're showing the using the AI content. And this is a picture dating back to 30,000 years ago. Uh, to vividly presenting the time of the years back to the age. Although we cannot show you in person here because we are not connecting to the QR code, but this is a picture that is showing that is being exhibited in Jeju National Museum using precise scanning. And this is a picture that is showing the relics of the Jeju National Museum using this really scanning and AR content. So this is a relic museum, so it is not the same as a museum. And therefore, in my case, People who are visiting this the relic museum will be have a we want to enjoy the sense of the joy of the relic. So this is the something that we have delivered a sample of the relic and people who want to enjoy the real relic might have to go to the Jeju National Museum. 
So this is a relic museum that has been operated like something that has been run by your friend. So it's a sample of the relic, not the real one. So this is something that you can enjoy freely to see using the air contents and see in large. So this is a relic sample that is different from the original one. So if you see it using the air contents, you can see how the uh, things have been happening in the dating back to the age, and you can have some kind of immersive experience by using the air contents. So we've talking about a lot of metaverse recently. So metaverse is a combination that is using the uh, the beyond meta and the earth universe. So this is a virtual world, right? So it is unlike the real world, which has been described as a virtual world. So you know all where this site is? This is a site in the Gangju. If we're using the AR content, and if we put the devices here, we can see the wheels right up here. And we can also see the map coming from DJ Falls. And this is all content that is using, the making best use of the AR content. So you might be curious about how we have made use of the smart devices. So it is not about the utilization. It is first about the recording. So the Gyeongju has much more history dating back to the age before. But this is in a time of the transition. So we are focusing on the recording. And so now we are seeing as a challenge and that we have to record all the things that we're going through. So we are showing all of the recordings to people as much as we can. So this is why they have utilized the AR contents to the things that we have tracked down the road. And there is another one is called HoloLens. It is something that is being that can be explained by using a PC and the HoloLens, if you're using the HoloLens, if it's seen by your naked eyes and and if you're using the air contents on that, you can use it for the edu educational purposes. And for example, if you see the whale using the air content, you can see the virtual world of the whales that can be used for the edu educational purposes for children. So in the case of Hantanga River Global Geo Park, we're going to archive all of the content and we're going to scan all of the major areas and ultimately this can be utilized for a lot of people. And by doing so, this can be a way that can be enjoyed by a lot of people. And this could contribute to reinforcing the local identity. And this is about the monitoring. The Joseong Jolly is something that is being happening and going through a lot of changes by the natural factors. And so we're going to have a periodic and regular 3D scanning records and how the, they have going through the transformation. And this will, the data has includes the appearance of the changes and how the information about the weight and the appearance that have gone through the, a lot of changes. And this, all of the data will contribute to the preserving the information. And this will be the way to preserve all of the cultural heritage that is very worthwhile to our nation. So we believe that the local community should be something that we can have the intrinsic value to be higher and the contents that can be enjoyed all together with greater number of people. So this should be taking place with the, uh, the trends that has happened with the COVID-19 pandemic. So 
This should be achieved through the continuous activities through small grid gatherings and also the Hantangang uh, River Geoparty Monitoring and by making films and archives all the local communicate community resources. At first, we have targeted the population like the elderly and the disabled who do not have a great access to the content and the digital information. But this will be expanded to all of the age populations, including ordinary people and elderly and the disabled. So through a new channels, they could be able to enjoy all of the contents. And through the smart science and humanities, they're going to enjoy all of the contents, which will be converted by the smart industry. So all of the data that has been com collected in our local community will be enjoyed by the people after the COVID-19 pandemic now. And we are going to collect all of the data down the road. And we are going to collect the data by recording all of them. So at a time difficult times of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're going to head toward a new world, and I hope we could have a healthier life even in these difficult times of COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Representative Director Bihi Kim emphasized the importance of different attempts to continue community activities, togetherness, sharing, and virtual world to sustain community activities amid the ongoing global pandemic. We believe that her presentation would be a good case in point in operating the Hantangang River Geopark during the ongoing pandemic. Next, we'll be hosting discussions with the topic presented by Professor Kyungsik, who will take a short 10 minute break. But we are very short on time. We will be back as soon as possible. We will be back after five minutes. Please return within five minutes. Thank you.
Presenters and panelists and chair, please come up to the stage. Let us move on to the discussions for the topic presentations, our last session of the event. The discussions for today's conference will be chaired by Honorary Professor Kyung Sik Woo of the Department of Geology at Kangwon University, who contributed greatly to enlistment of Hantangan River Geopark as a UNESCO Global Geopark. Today's panelists will be Executive Director Hye Young Park of Hwasongsi Ecotour Corp and President In Jung Yum of Potonsi Hansan Education Community. Professor, please share the discussions. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing a similar number of participants and audience. Well, this event is being broadcasted 
online, we are we are, know that there are people watching online. How much time are we allowed? I'm sure that the event is until five. Should the discussions be until five? Yes. If we have a delay, if I speak less, we, I'm sure that the discussion session will become a lot shorter. We've seen some great presentations today. Before the meeting, before the discussions, I would like to note that I believe in 2010 or 2011, the organizers came up to my room and expressed their ambition to make the Hantangang River Geopark a global geopark. For Pochen and the Hantangang River region, they are the most optimal place for global geoparks. We always had that in mind. But for the geopark to be enlisted as a UNESCO Global Geopark, I am very happy. And hosting this event and chairing discussions, I am very honored and pleased. First of all, three presenters had given us presentations but there, I believe that there's no need to summarize their presentations. We have two panelists. First, Representative Yum, I have seen you several times. Um, President, President Park, I have not seen you very often. We will hear from you. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to speak up. As much as time allows, I will add comments. I have a lot to say. Frankly, I have a lot to say. I have papers full of what I hope to say, but due to constraints of time, I will say as the time allows. Ms. Heyoung Park, please continue. Yes. The Hantangang River Geopark International Conference, thank you for inviting me through the union established by the residents, the, we are a co-op that we are operating with local residents. We've had presentations of experts from home and abroad. I have learned a lot today. And as a panelist, I have, although, because rather than giving proposals, and another important point is that, to not forget, I would like to mention some of the important points. Geoparks are contributing to local economy and the local value. I myself and many people believe that the, as this Hantangan River Geopark has been certified as a global geopark, many hope to visit Pochen. As a resident of Gyeonggi province, I am extremely proud of the geopark. Furthermore, the, some, some of the candidates, some of the new candidates for geoparks, the Hwasong Geopark, I hope that the geopark will make it as a global geopark. The reason for inviting me would be the importance of nurturing the local economy the Hantangang Geopark with, for sustainability is nurturing the local economy and the community. Furthermore, as Mr. Kube Kim have mentioned on a presentation on SDGs, it was very interesting. At our COOP, we have discussed, we have carried out a workshop for world tourism, and it included some of the key points mentioned by Mr. Kibe Kim. The ideas were almost coherent. And furthermore, our union members believe that tourism should include some of the SDGs, number 15 and 17. The opinions of local residents and activists concur with that of experts, and that is very interesting. Local residents may take pride that they, their activities are contributing to the local community. That is very important. And our union members believe 
that through our education and training over 15, 20 years, the Hantangang River Geo Park and Hwasong Geo Park are utilized by not only the well, through the efforts in Gyeonggi and Seoul region. Last year, due to the pandemic, our activities had been somewhat stopped, but some Ca Cambriac period and other ages have been explored by students. Also, as the experts from home and abroad have mentioned, residential participation is very important. Even with many tourists visiting the geoparks, if the local residents do not welcome them, we cannot have a sustainable operation. We hope that operation of geoparks will be welcomed by the residents. For that, the residents should serve a critical role, and they should be at the center of all the efforts. And, and the benefits and the profits of the geopark must be returned to the community and used for their good. And the local residents must more actively utilize geoparks and have a sense of mission in conserving geoparks. The city government of Pocheon, through the ministerial project, will promote some other tourist activities. In 2021, activation of ecosystem in Gyeonggi province has been promoted by some new regulations, and we expect activation of more efforts. The projects of the central government and local governments serve as important roles for these efforts. At the end of the efforts, um, the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism plays an important role. I have three proposals. Two, and first would be the policy to promote resident-centered tourism. Although the city of Hwasong do not have tourist activities, um, the Department of Tourism is promoting some activities, leading some efforts by the local residents. Although the budget is not large, the effort has been continued for about six years. City tours, ecosystem tourism programs are being carried out by the local residents and some unions. Also, I, it is recommended that local tourist companies join in in the program. And tourist coordinators will be created as new jobs. We hope to implement this throughout a system. Secondly, we must ensure that ecological assets and geological assets are the most effective and sustainable when local residents participate. They must have affection for these resources through a continuous set of local resident participation programs. Well, many local governments have great budgets, and we must ensure that local residents are given sufficient budgets for these programs. For the local community programs, they must have local community programs and resident programs, and the entity of these programs must be the local residents to promote growth. Local residents should not be viewed only as subjects of education. You should not take, have doubt in the abilities of the citizens, but trust in them for future growth. Through affection and sense of mission, we must operate these programs. Furthermore, elementary, middle, and high school students should, be, should benefit from these programs. Lastly, for the geological system, the programs must be expanded. I know that some metropolitan schools use the Hantangang River Geo Park very much. Not only schools, but tourist companies should be utilizing these geo parks. For external entities to use the geo parks, they must receive the guidance of geo park guides. For external visitors, if they do not use the local community, that denotes a lack of preparation. Um, hotels, gift shops, restaurants should ha have the needed facilities and the programs. If these conditions are met, the Hantangang River Geopark will 
service not only a one-day course but two, three-day course, contributing greatly to the local economy. And many local residents and businesses will be able to benefit from the programs forming a network contributing to the local community in turn. If so, we will be able to have a healthy virtuous system. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. The city of Hwajang-seong is promoting a geopark, I hear. And from what I hear, you have made a lot of preparations. Next up, we have someone that I have met several times already. And she runs a community called Hansan Education Community at the city of Pocheon. She's the president of the education community. She contacted me and asked for a special lecture. I was very surprised. I have mentioned it to the city of Pocheon, and I was surprised that they had established the group on their own without the support of the city. It was purely autonomous, and this shows the participation of the local residents. They are an entity established on their own. Listening to today's lectures, the president should, will be sharing her thoughts on the Pocheon, city of Pocheon and some of her thoughts for Hantangan River Geopark. Hello, I'm the president of the Hansarang Education Community. I'm very pleased to meet you. And today, not only myself, but some managers of the local community and residents have visited me. Some are new to me, some have met me already. And I'm very pleased to have today's event. This is very refreshing. The Hansa Education Community was, was established in 2016. It, was, it first comprised of parents, and now it has grown as a group. And now we are developing textbooks and studying materials. And now, with the exacerbated climate change, we are responding to climate change as well. Beyond our group, personally, I believe that I have served as a village instructor. I have been carrying out many different classes in organizations and schools. And at the city of Pocheon, I have been greatly impressed by the natural resources. I take great pride, but our children do not know about them very well. But last year, as the Hantangan River Geopark was acknowledged as a global geopark, children are being raised awareness and instructors at schools are becoming more aware of the geopark and gardens. Ms. Kyeong Park have given three proposals. And through these three proposals, I, well, her ideas concur exactly with mine. And even through the ideas of the presenters, I could feel that I could feel that some of the topics that we needed to discuss were discussed. First of all, I'd like to mention again on what General Manager Quebec Kim have mentioned in regards to SDGs. Local communities and students at schools and citizens are engaging in activities. This instills pride and affection for the region. And even before and after these community activities, I believe that I love the city of Pocheon more. More than myself, the growing children would think the same. So although as I have proposed before, at our website, we have something called GeoMade. Last year, this year has been pretty much the same, and the city of Pocheon, the organizations um, in the city of Pocheon are sometimes not enlisted in this website. And we hope to discover some of the great organizations and get in touch with them and cooperate with them if we could. And today, although he could make it through the case in Japan, I was able to share my concerns. First of all, discussing the operation of geoparks, it's the same for our geology center. 
the operators of the centers may change, but the local residents do not. In that sense, if the efforts could be led by residents, it could contribute to sustainability a lot. And it may lead to some social changes. We are at the point when we must make such considerations. And magazines are very important as well. Advertisements are important as well. Promotions are important. It has been mentioned that we must be fully aware of the region. I am very happy that we are able to contribute to these efforts. My proposal is a promoting council. We need to consider promotion councils. We know that there are 55 organizations and six individuals and regional museums. If the city of Pochon could, could have some certifications or beyond certifications, make some more efforts to conserve local resources, that would be great. That's a proposal that I would like to make. And another thing was the ability of individuals beyond being subjects of education. We're nurturing guides, and we have had an academy. With such education, these guides could actually serve in the local community. And these citizens could have pop-up zones. For instance, um, we are creating some textbooks and things. People could have exchanges, and some of the exemplary cases could serve as souvenirs. We could have such discoveries. I propose such a pop-up zone. It was mentioned that geoparks are splendid. If without the residents, there could be no great geoparks. So I hope that today's event could be something beyond discussions, and we hope to have the event again next year, and we hope to have more events where we could have more fruitful discussions. Thank you to panelists for their profound ideas and insights. They are two exemplary figures that we have a lot to learn from. So there were some ideas that I hope to present. Guess in the floor, if you have any ideas, we would like to hear from one or two guests. Uh, I want to ask for in a, within one minute or two, can you start with having your brief introduction? So I'm working in Geo Village and I'm the representative of the Geo Village, Yi Su Hyun. So I was impressed with all the presentation you've given. And you have talked about how we can coexist the Geo Park and how we can operate well, the importance of operation. And the participation by the residents and all of the organization is very critical. So the support and the care by the residents and the organization might be very critical. So this should not stop in there. And this should go to something that is sustainable. And this could raise the values of the residents and the organizations and also the cultural heritage. So having this kind of uh, local business, we've talked about the, the tourism and they're having no sufficient interest by the local residents. And because they are having this kind of tourism side, they are having given a kind of control to the local resident. And we have thought about how we can turn into some kind of a carbon related village. And here there is no sufficient a uh, utilization of this region. So I hope that you could have a better suggestion to this. And here we have all the people who are concerned to the Pochonshi, and I hope we can have a greater feedback to that. And I want to have one more. So if we don't have more, we could have a short remark from the Lee. 
and the representative of the Hantang Gang Academy. Thank you for having arranged this kind of variable time. And we have pondered about how we can think about what kind of ways we could think about to uh, achieve the sustainability of the Jewel Park. So we have thought about the gardening or some kind of putting clothes to trees, some kind of activities that we could think of. And by doing so, we could have some kind of a sense of pride and some kind of local identity that we can contribute to the region. And by having a close a meeting with the tourism uh, tourists, they have also uh, gave us a compliment and we sense, had a sense of pride to that. So is tourism something that we have to get all together? So this kind of participation is something that we have to get together. And the local resident cannot give any every a the explanation about the Jiu Park. So this is why the Po Chun Shi and the local resident should come together or together for the successful tourism local business. And this should come after should, this could come along with education and all of the other uh, local businesses along the tourism. And there are other things I could think of, not only the education or the tourism. And so I think there should be a greater importance of networking between these sectors. So this should not stop here saying about the words. And all of the people and organizations that are concerned should come together. And the local community representatives should come together. And all of the people concerned should talk about how we can have kind of, we can provide a course program to people who are coming to Pochanxi Digio Park. Thank you. Presenters, would you have any comment to add for about two minutes? I want to ensure that everyone has had their opportunities to speak up. Well, there is no need to speak up, but so let me say a few words. I believe that some of the, most of the words are directed to us. I'm sure that there are efforts that we must make. There's something that I want to mention. We have many local residents and community members. Executive Director Hye Young Park, she has participated as a presentation in our ecosystem program. So I made a recommendation for her to participate in today's event. We have been in ecotourism for about two years and a half. And we need to make some follow-up measures. We are making many contemplations. Well, some say that something our efforts should be beyond budget by the government, but infrastructure and budget, but beyond that, we want to make sure continuous operation. We need to make our own efforts. Speaking with the community members, they express wishes for some specific support, but they believe that some of the support just ends there. Like Executive Director Park has mentioned, there are some areas that local community residents and we should think about together. We should have trust for each other. I hope to make a comment on these areas. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was sufficiently timed. Let me, we have about five minutes remaining. Let me add some more sentences and wrap up today's discussions. Today's topic had been sustainable development and SDGs issued by the United Nations. Well, Mr. Kubek Kim has made some great contributions, but we hope to conserve the nature and live together in harmony as a society. But in all, 
the natural resources of the Hantangan River should contribute to our local community as a region in which everyone could live happily. The, for applications to be filled for the Jeju Geopark, they emphasize that local community members must have the sense of ownership. What that means is that what they mean by sense of ownership is that as a resident living at the geopark, they should be proud. They should take pride, but that's not easy. We are living in difficult times, and there must be some incentives, whether it be financial or something to help them in their lives. We must incentivize them. If there are about 1,000 people who are incentivized through these programs. They will be all joining in the webinar. I have participated in many programs like this. Next year at the city of Pocheon, we hope to have civil servants and local residents to join in, to have discussions, to have candid discussions for two, three years. If so, we'd be able to reflect their ideas more comfortably. Like the representative and other notable presenters have spoken, I believe that we share a common idea. And furthermore, uh, the local governments must take down some barriers. We have some walls that we must tear down. Well, we mentioned promotion councils. In filling out applications, there's a geopark office, and there's also a committee. And local residents must always participate in the committee. But there could be improvements. As mentioned, there are three items that must be implemented. And we must make good use of the systems. That's an emphasis that I'm making in every event, so I'll stop discussions. I'm sure that you're all aware of this now. Not only in Pocheon, but in Cholon and Yeoncheon, everyone must be unified as one. That's an idea that I hope to communicate. I love the idea of pro developing local produce. And an idea that I would like to suggest is to have different local produce at different points. They shouldn't have the same item in different locations. They must have an item unique to each location at Hwajanggyeon and Pidulginang Falls. They must be developed in a way that benefits the local residents. These products will be developed by the city of Pocheon, but what to be developed is a matter that must be settled by the local residents, with the local residents. Next up, we discussed the leveling. People have different ideas on tourism. We must have different signposts, like Ms. Mihi Kim had mentioned in her presentation, I took notes, digital language. In making things, we must think into the future, two, one, two decades into the future. But we are very short-sighted. We wouldn't have imagined ourselves as what we are today, 20 years ago. 3D scanning, AR, VR, all these technologies, we will have soon have an era in which they are not very special. They become the mundane. Well, monitoring was mentioned while discussing 3D scanners, but if we were to have 3D scanning of the Hantangang River, we could have, we could be riding a helicopter above the river through VR, we could have the experience, that sensation at home. Those ideas have truly touched me. Let me add just one more thing. You discussed promotion. I believe that the Hantangang River is wow. 
around the Hantangang River, what do you see? Just paddy fields, nothing else. Just rice fields. Well, scientists mentioned that there are some important areas, but all we see are rice fields. But just several meters, we have the wow scenery. It's a view that you can never see anywhere else in the world. For instance, at Hwajagyeon, if you go down just a little bit, we have some unimaginable scenery near the rivers, whether it be Gosokjeong or Mongguri Valley, Bidulginang Falls. They are splendid. But for the general public, it's unimaginable. So we need to promote these areas, this splendid scenery. I'm not a PR major, but if you could impress the people where they have never expected to be impressed, it could have some splendid effect, phenomenal effects, something unimaginable, something beyond imagination, something that SDGs could truly touch people. Well, we're just r about right in time. I have served as a professor for about 35 years. If, before I finish, would you have anything to add? He's the highest civil servant here. If he could add a comment, if we could make a pledge, that would be great. Thank you all of the great presentation given today. And I think we have a lot of tasks ahead. But also today, as of now, the Jira part is not something that is well known to people, and it is at a starting point, I think. And there are a lot of concerns, of course, but, but the link to the local community is something that is underway, and that is something that should be given all together. Thank you. Thank you very much. We had a Japanese presenter they discussed that they are having people problems, but the civil servants of Pocheon seem to be relatively happy. Dr. Dongwon Choi has been serve, serving as a curator for 10 years, and we have some long-serving geologists. We did not have a shift in administration, so we through direct exchanges, the pledge to city of Pochen was that to make the best geopark in the world. Well, that marks the end of discussions today. Thank you, everyone, for your contribution. That marks the end of the 2021 International Conference. First of all, Hantangan River Geopark is taking its baby steps as a member of UNESCO. I would like to ask the local residents to revitalize the Hantangan River Geopark as the best geopark in the world. Thank you.